Well, this weekend and many of you may be on the road going somewhere so, but this is a nice segment because this is actually the peak season for the tetrapodus and can we have a, this image here this is actually uh which the the species is very new uh the last 10 15 years and it's really start getting the attention is when we have the tetrapodus a variety Christina or very famous clone called C1. This is the one that had jump have the colors changing color. And this one is this is the one that I have a wall video the other day. And all this this been ever blooming. Uh, you see the spike here. This is the new spike for this year and they just rebloom from the old spike. And the temperature will affect the spotting. So the warmer the temperature, the less spotting. So if they are, depending on where they are, uh, we have in really hot weather, this, this is the summer. So you're gonna see a lot more white this time of the year. Uh, that this plant, for example, is closer to the path, the, the wet path. So the wet path is actually a, the, the coolest spot of the greenhouse where the, the fang, the uh, wet path coming up. So they are cooler, so you're gonna see more of this. Right. and this is what tetrapodus does and so this is the close up here this is the tetrapodus C, uh, C1 and the characteristic of those tetrapodus is if if you don't spike them this is the this is the characteristic for tetrapodus the spike usually like this will rest it is parallel with the leaf so they actually this is how they grow in the wild but in the wild they sort of like hang themselves on the tree so tetrapodus does this uh the nice thing about the tetrapodus is they are very very vigorous this is the first broom okay they are capable of doing two spikes it's not unusual or, or com it's very common to have tetrapodus on the first broom to have two spikes especially the, the tetrapodus from Norman's orchid. Uh, we've been doing this kind of line breeding for the last uh, 10 years. And I personally very fascinated about this species. You can tell I actually have a t uh, talk to Phil Fanatic uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, a Zoom talk just specific on the tetrapodus, the breeding. If you're interested, uh, the Jeff Yano, uh, the symposium is actually taped and recorded and so you still can pay uh, for the symposium and, still, and access to all the speakers okay uh, but this is what make people attention but in Asia they always talk about this as being speciosa but Dr. Christensen uh, uh, has kind of and Royal Horticultural Society only recognize uh, tetrapodus now. So if you have a label, say speciosa or tetrapodus variety speciosa, actually, as far as the Royal Horticultural Society is concerned, they're the one that governor. When we send in registration for hybrid, uh, they do not recognize uh, speciosa anymore, but they only recognize tetrapodus. So if you have an old label, uh, I don't, depending on where you get it from, uh, if they still have the speciosa there, change the label to tetrapodus. So this is the C1, but personally, uh, this, the, so the C1, also, uh, they, this is the maximum they do, okay? Once they get to a height, they just go on and on. Uh, Jeff, can you see this? So people can see a better branching. Even this old spike, they uh, with a with a proper diet and uh, mega dry. You see here, they even do a branching here. Uh, this is what mega dry does. Okay, they really activate the plant, especially when they are in blooming season. So they just go on and on and cascading almost like a, a little wildfall uh, firework. And one thing about tetrapodus. Uh, I personally, if I go a lot, I do a wall. I don't like to put on, on a big print like this. I like to put hand, I like to hang them. 
And that's why I have a collection on the video. I hand them to sort of like this. Okay. Uh, this is actually simple. You can do. Uh, you can do. A, uh, you can also put it in the hanging basket. Uh, but I do have a hanging area, so you can sort of. Eric made this for me. You just uh, uh, do a staple gun on a six-inch part, a five-inch or six-inch part. Uh, you don't if I if you don't want to mount it on the wood, uh, you can just simply just sit rest them here, and. I like because Tetrapus, the leaf, just that like banana, is very close and dense. So a lot of time on the bench or even on the light. If you have on the light, make sure you have a, a fan. And the Tetrapus, banana, make sure they are closer to the fan. So because the leaves are so close together, it's very easy for a lot of insects to hide under the foliage especially mite, three, spider mite, it's easy for them to hide there and then sometimes when we spray them, it's hard to get to it. So this is what I like to, uh, if you are doing uh, a large number, I have my big plant, that specimen plant all for breeding. I always like to hand them, that way it's a lot of air circulation. So the air will go under the foliage and that way actually go in, uh, it keeps the leaf cooler, uh, especially uh, if you, uh, we have, if uh, sometimes uh, we cannot keep our temperature below 85, okay. So tetrapus being very thin, it's easier for them to heat up versus uh, Phenonopsa corinthiae. So they're very thin, so you want to have maximum air circulation around the leaf. And once that they are cool off, the leaf temperature are cool, they are happy, they continue to flower and that's the trick uh, i have tetrapus start to bloom in about april and this tetrapus uh march april uh if you have under light if you go under light especially jeff young's on light uh 12 hour minimum you can have tetrapus flower for you under light almost year round but in the greenhouse uh our daylight is the shortest time of the year is November. Uh, the sun don't come up until 12 o'clock, it's kind of cloudy. And then the sun set at four o'clock. So that's when my tetrapper will stop blooming. So I usually have about March uh, to the end of October. So, so that's a very big, long blooming period. And so this is what tetrapper is so nice. And I think, uh, when I was growing orchid in the 80 and 90, uh, these are not available. Uh, me initially, all this has been happening the last 15, 20 years uh, because a lot of this, uh, they are from Indonesia, they're from Southeast Asia, uh, because they are getting to, because the, the plantation for some of more exotic fruit, like durian, uh, oil palm. So they cut in a lot of virgin jungle. And that's why we've seen a lot of this new color form and different area of tetrapus coming in. So if you have a tetrap, if you never have a tetrapus, the C1, this one here is the entry level, it's the easiest one to grow, it's a proven. Uh, this we always keep, this is one species and one crown of tetrapus C1 is one crown we always repeat uh every time we redo it we always have about two three hundred plants four hundred plants normally five hundred and then that will be good enough for three four years and then we will do it again and this is why we save all this uh breeding print stop print from the c1 okay uh and how many of you have c1 have ter any tetrapus growing right now anybody Okay, so you are very familiar with uh, with this, but what? So the I want to show you, and this is actually uh, what we call the traditional tetrapus, is the most popular one, is the spotted form. Okay, when people think about tetrapus, they think about also the C one. Uh, <laughs> 
How about this? There it is. The, 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 the most common one is a, a spotter form. But this is not, this is an improved spotter form. A spotter form is actually uh, uh, the most common one and also very, very p prolific breeding. And so initially, this kind of spotting form is one being used for breeding a lot. And I want to show you. So many of you have this, I purposely did not spy this. This is young, young dragon, uh, young, young brood uh, butterfly, a uh, blueberry. Okay. This is seeding, and if you don't spike it, this have actually have a, a well, let's say indigo in the background. So in the primary, uh, this is German. I'm sorry. This is German Vincent. This is a uh, Valencia cross with Tetrapodus, but a blue one. So as a primary hybrid. The chopper is still very dominant. You can see they're still resting on the foliage by the species does. Okay. But nice about the choppers, remember violet, say indigo, or even bernina. They don't have a lot of flower count. But this is what bernina or the choppers do for the hybrid or the primary hybrid. A lot of flower. And both species are very fragrant. Okay. So this is why a lot of time Tetrapus hybrid is getting so popular now. Okay, uh, but nowadays Tetrapus have a lot of different color form. We have the alba form. We have the blue form. And Jeff, can we show this one here? We just released this number again. This is actually is the coffee form. The common name is called coffee form, and. I take this off to the website because I wasn't too sure. Make sure, want to make sure that this one actually all flower have the brew of uh, the coffee color, and it does. So I can tell you, every one of them have coffee color, but occasionally they might have some brew coming up here. You see here. So this is what I call the gray brew uh, coffee. This one here, you can actually still see some coffee here. Okay, so. We don't know why, uh, but the, uh, a lot of the uh, coffee color, you need some brew in the background. But again, if I grow any tetrapodus, I personally I would like to spike them. That way, the the uh, the faded flower will not rest it on the leaf. You don't uh, if you don't pick it up right on time, they might decomp they might rot the leaf here. Look at the look at the flower bud here. This is going to be really dark color form. And another character, the same characteristic of the C1, always very flat. Like this. Okay. So they are available on the website again. But look how interesting. This or AV1 event all had the coffee color, some of the mo mocha. And interesting, if you flower a blue one. Do not complain. Do not say no man. It, you know, mislabel. No. If you, most of them are going to be coffee colored like this. If you got a blue one like this, a coffee blue, buy a lottery ticket <laughs> because it is so rare. And and this is not. Uh, we're getting a lot of progress. Uh, so this is why uh, when you buy print, and we are very particular about the label because we actually prepare. This is actually uh, 2589. Yeah, 2589 is a Tetrapus purple, a blue one, with a coffee. Okay, so this is, and what I really like, it, we were trying to get the, to enhance the coffee color with some touch of blue in there. So I think this one haven't flowered yet, but I think this is gonna be really dark coming up. And how many of you have the coffee color yet? Uh, th this is the newest trend uh, to have the coffee. But I always like to buy them. Uh, uh, make sure you buy it from uh, a good source that know what they're doing. Because a lot of time, uh, sometimes the blue and purple, uh, even some a lot of white ones were coming up. 
So all that's what, this is why I don't not I take it off the website, and then now I release again because I know how what the percentage of this cross is going to be a nice and coffee color. And okay, and this is the German Vincent. Okay, the, the German Vincent. Remember the German Vincent, is younger print. German Vincent. If you spy him. German Vincent is Tetrapodus Bavalese Indigo. Okay, so this is from a little tiny two inch pot. When they get to the four inch pot, okay, in two years. This is why I love this type of hybrid with Indigo. And they are sure this one is taking their union break right now. They have been booming profusely for about four months. So it's actually taking a break right now. So uh, I, they are building up more energy. You can tell, and then this is why you uh, a lot of this sequential flower, Bellina, Valencia, those and uh, Amboliensis, those species that continue flower, do not make mix the feeding in the wind in the summertime because this is their season. They continue to flower. They need a lot of light. They need a lot of feeding because they continue to put out a lot of feed, uh, uh, flower for you. If you don't feed it in enough, uh, uh, you're not going to get the flower count. You're not getting the new spike uh, coming up. And also, and this one, for example, uh, personally, a lot of people think this is a Kennedy. I will re I will repot it for next year because this haven't been repot for about three years, and a lot of time the older leaf, too many new spike is start hanging up. They not going the new spike, the new leaf, and the new root is not going down there. That give me an indication, and also the the leaf color. The D color does not have that sheen or shine, that kind of dull. That tell that t also tell you the poly media maybe have a lot of soap build up, or it just been more on the acid side. So I still can this look at good more one more year. So this is what on the older print like this. I know this has been here for about almost three years. But I'm not going to repot it. They can be here for another year. You don't have to repot every year or every two years. If you're using a good, because we water one, uh, we water every other week in the summertime, uh, even when they don't need it. Because what we usually do is once a month, you do a good leaching. Okay, when I say leaching, you water at least twice. Summertime is the most challenging time for my orchid here because I do not have good water quality. We only use city water here. And our water is very high EC. In, in term, it's like high salt content. Uh, right now, about 0.8 of EC. Just the water coming up because we had to import a lot of water from Colorado. By the time they got here, it's high EC content. So that's why I do not, uh, we do a lot of uh, sometime we always before we feed any orchid this uh on the print we do a, a ec test uh, if you are away about foliage uh, about one uh a lot of time i do a foliar feeding it's just a normal orchid and just do a, a foliar feeding and also this is why uh, a lot of time i tell people to always water your print before you put any chemical whether it's pesticide normal orchid food even make it dry because yeah, what happened is if I water the plant when the potting media is very dry even just the water itself is high point a EC on that it's quite salty you and and I added the fertilizer it's going to increase the EC even higher you put it on the very dry potting media the plant are so thirsty they're going to suck up all the moisture all the contact even from the leaf and that's how you get a lot of the time what we call fertilizer burn uh, or sometimes if you spray pesticide or you spray fungicide 
the plant is going to soak out too much. So you're going to have over what I call drug, just like human, you're going to have a drug overdose on them. Okay. So, and so there's a lot of the nice uh, improvement on the uh, uh, test hoppers. What even like this one here, this is young, young, uh, Yang Yang uh, Blueberry. This is Yang Yang's new star. And so this have two shot, two shot of tetrapus in the background. And the pollen parent is by let's say indigo. So what nice about this? Well, it got it added the cut, it still had the characteristic. This is how dominant of the tetrapus. But look at this sheen. You got the the Violacea indigo enhance the color so compared to the older german vincent you got more flower count okay and then fragrant and this is just a stem prop of first bloom and the best part also what i like about this clone this from prince Loki young young this is heavily uh heavily in sense when he first offered this clone about six years ago i said young young you, this is a fabulous clone. Can you make sure you do extra for me? So he did it again uh, and do some for us. And I and this time we actually go to print bigger and offer this. So this is uh, when this, so this has become a, a premium size. This is about five years old. This is five years old print. So look at the root, how vigorous. So. The chopper start adding to some other species. In this case, it's uh, violet indigo on it. Wonderful color. It's non-fading. The color stay the same. You see there? It doesn't fade because of, because of violet indigo on it. And the fragrance. Jeff, can you smell the fragrance from here on this one? Marvelous, marvelous. So. And a lot of people have what I call the mite problem uh, this year. Uh, mite and thrift is a problem this year. And I was talking to, uh, I make a phone call to Taiwan, and I said, I asked my friend uh, Jia Ho, who grew a lot of this type. And they also have mite problem in Taiwan. Everybody, like, it's dry. But interesting enough, his wife, which is the, the grower for Jaho Orchid, he said, Norman, the, you know the best way for mite is moisture. He said, spray the leaf. When you're missing the leaf, try to wet the leaf and then trying to spread under the leaf. Mite, especially spider mite, they hate moisture. They really hate moisture. So if you have a going under light, you make sure you have a saucer with a lot of water and pebble. Okay. The mite is not that easy. It's actually it's easy to uh, take care of it. The trouble is, once you have a mite infestation, even after you kill the mite, the physical damage, the scar, is going to be there. So it'll be a permanent damage on them. So uh, it's, uh, so next time, when you spray, when you water your plant, or when during the week, I don't. If, if we have a custom, we have member for all over the country uh here always dry they might all have problem in the middle of summer i know elaine taylor have uh might problem even in her for her greenhouse in uh, central florida uh i talked to several people in uh, in the area uh unfortunately florida being in a big agriculture state uh the very unusual might have problem in humid area of Florida so they actually because the uh, they spray so much uh, pesticide in Florida a lot of stuff we cannot spray anymore in California that is available in Florida because the Florida is a very big agricultural state so they have a very high lobby uh, power a lot of the mite in Florida are what we call unless you can have you have a special license to purchase the very very toxic chemical uh, they they are resistant to most of the uh, pesticide on the market that you can buy of over the counter. So the best part, the best defense we have right now is in the summertime. Either whether you are wet 
or moist or if you think you might have mite problem uh, we are always trying to increase the humidity with our orchid with under light window seal or even in a greenhouse okay now i mix the leaf mix the greenhouse with a with a water with a uh, fogger in the morning uh, they that humidity higher humidity and moisture will actually reduce the mite population or infestation they will go after the, the different topic different uh different area uh another way i think will be good to have is to have some other house plant that is the for example put some petunia in the greenhouse petunia is soft and juicy mite will go uh, most likely to go after the petunia versus your orchid so do that whatever it work so do a dummy and then after petunia just change every month if once you they once the petunia have and have all the mite and drip on them store it up put a new one in there okay now i want to share with you uh what's really interesting from my own breeding is this one here jeff now we just release this one so this is actually a cross of the tetrapus form the green form called norman j uh the one from our nursery amaos and we cross with a traditional spotted one like this okay so i thought oh okay let's, let's make it interesting and sure enough at first they open up white and i'm kind of disappointed they all white but the, about two weeks later this white become green and then about another four weeks they become darker and darker green so this is fascinating so we actually this is actually okay better than what i expected so this is what happened with with the seeding don't make a judgment on the first flower open the first two three days and they say oh this is the this is the loser get it out of here no this is actually good thing i waited and waited and waited because this is almost like a green c1 now okay instead of the red spot we are actually changing color from white with spot to green with spa okay so if you don't have this one this is brand new uh it's available we actually release again at first i, I was very disappointed i was not going to offer but i said oh my god we're going to have white and green and then people going to really disappoint and it all it ought to not be white i was really hoping with some kind of j light j green but with more flower because the uh, tetrapod spotter can give a lot of flower. But so I took it out of the website, but now I put it back in because I now we can sh share this wonderful new trend with you. Okay, so this is the, the number. Okay, there's maybe less than 50 of them that we can uh, we will release it's the first time. Right? Huh? Yeah, this is you only can get it from Norman. Okay, so not all tetrapods is, is 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 the same. Okay, this is only from Norman Orchid Nursery, and it's our in-house breeding. Okay, so this is very exciting. And now, now I had to put this into my talk on the new color form, or or my talk for the tetrapods talk. And then another hybrid that I make also is using the because we, I just love the, the Tetrapus Norman, Norman J. Uh, the, my Alba, my, my best Alba with Tetrapus Green, Norman, uh, Moncler AMAOS. And guess what? At first I thought, oh, good. I achieved my goal. I got some really nice, again, the reason we put it into Alba is because Alba give a lot of flower, okay and good branching habit because usually tetrapus green don't give you multiple spike 
Okay, but now, so I make uh, all about to carry a C part, but now you can the open the green, a stage H. This is actually even greener and greener than the Ketchupper's form green. No, no, uh, got an AM. Wonderful. And more, even more bigger. Look at two spikes. So now you have a green C1, the changing color. When not only the change color, the entire flower, including the lip. Remember the Tetravers lip, you should have cotton ball like. Everything turns to green. Almost like they become chlorophyll. When the when the flower become chlorophyll like this, that means they actually the flower become the uh, flower is doing some photosynthesis and they're making their own nutrient. And so Look at this, Jeff. Can we see this new spike? Not only had new spike, but it's this have a third spike coming. You see here. This third spike is coming here again, and Alba enhance this branching habit is going. So instead of letting letting resting like this, I would start spiking them because this is going to flower for a long time so now once I spike up like this then you can all this branching here can have a better development and the flower face facing down here okay see all this new spike coming up so they will be arching so, I thought I had seen all the color form of tetrapers, but you just never know on all this, this form. Uh, here's another 27, 47. Yeah, same thing. Here, when they first opened, it's green with white with spot. White with spot. And now it starts changing color. This is fun. I think, imagine this flower in the middle of Christmas. You got green and white for Christmas. And again, another spike coming. It's just a very good value. Okay. This is, uh, this is very exciting for this cross. I just had to share this with everybody. Okay. So, anybody have a question? So, what? The, the culture of the tetrapus, uh I would prefer them to uh, put a bamboo or wire, hang them up, okay? So that, especially on the old plant, this is what happens when you don't spike it. They just kind of hang down here. So this is actually a uh, spike from this year. So look at the branching. Look at what. This is why uh, people love Norman's Loki full and make a dry. This branching havoc. So once I spark it up like this, a, a better, it will give you a much better present, presentation here. And Tetrapa is wonderful for windowsill and under light. Now this is better. So again, if you're in Florida, this is the this this is the, the, the best species. You can mount it on the you can even mount it on the tree, or just rest them in the hanging basket, uh, a, a vendor basket, for example, and just let it just go on and on and on. Okay, and the fragrance to come with it. And okay, Jeff, how are we doing? How is the fertilizer on these? Are fertilizer. The same as all fails. All I, I all my final analysis on the same bench. Okay, you know, notice that Norman's Lucky Food only had one formulation. Okay, I could have, you know, separate into two or three. You no, know, just a cosmetic company to, to the ladies. No, let's make it simplify. We have 20 greenhouse. We have at least half a million print. Make it simple. Uh, one formulation, one a teaspoon per gallon of water, every other week feeding whether you uh what we do as a 40 feeding 
or water them down. But this time of the year, because it's summertime, most of the area in, in the state still long day, uh, water them down. Sometimes even if the moss in the summertime is still wet, it's still moist, go ahead and water them into the potting media because the root can use it. Winter time is a different story. Winter time, because short day, long night, we want to keep it on the dry side. But right now, it's long day, temperature is warm, the plant can use it. They are flowering all the time. They can use all the, the food you get them. If you don't feed them, if you forgot to feed them, well, that's okay. They won't die. But the flower number, number of flowers will reduce or Simply repeat this time, kind of take a week or two weeks or a union break. Okay, and other than that, the tetrapus pretty much up. Pass is many you worry about the mini bud because the leaf is close together. Sometimes mini bud is easy to hide underneath. So when you water, once in a while, you know, whether especially under light, the plants sometimes very close together. Always remember to take when you water the plant, look under the, the, the leaf. Okay, so always make sure you check under the foliage and when we water the plant, every